uh, I will take the pr uh, prerogative and exercise what I hope will be a rare opportunity to put myself first before my colleagues in delivering some remarks that uh, outline some priorities for the year ahead. First, let me say that it has been an honor to represent this community over the course of the last seven years. Arlington is an incredibly dynamic community and our trajectory over the decades has truly been remarkable. There is wide agreement that Arlington is a great place to live, to work, and to play, and to raise a family. And further, there is a commitment that we have all leaned into that those benefits be enjoyed by persons of all ages, of all races, of all backgrounds, and all identities. Much of the work of our county government and a considerable amount of constituent effort goes toward preserving that shared community vision. And this attention is needed now more than ever to address the central challenge of our time. Namely, how do we include all in this vision of Arlington? Those who through, who through no fault of their own have been unable to share in the fruits that this vision has produced? New neighbors who will join in and enhance this vision over time all the while ensuring that those who have contributed their time and talent to this community continue to see this as a place that they truly feel at home in. Now, in other words, how do we as an Arlington community, how do we work to ensure that we are providing opportunity for those who have been burdened and who have been missing while continuing to enhance the lives of those who have benefited. Now we are better equipped to address this challenge through our commitment to equity. Four years ago, we began in earnest to translate righteous rhetoric into act action by establishing equity as a core principle of our government and our community. I'm proud of the work to date, which has been focused on ensuring that our government enterprise is competent in taking actions that are mindful of and address equity considerations. As our capability in this area matures, I expect to see equity as integral to every aspect of what our government does. And this is really gonna be important this year where the fiscal outlook requires that we make really difficult budget choices and where continued uncertainty and challenges in the office market and the transportation sector leave us unable to confidently project where our budget's going to be in the years ahead. Now, amid this admittedly grim outlook is a real opportunity to intensify our focus on plans and priorities that are the path to a better Arlington today and a more sustainable Arlington tomorrow. Now, housing remains our central challenge where and how to increase supply, and how to assure a range of affordability and housing choices, issues that our community wrestles with constantly. Today, and during my years, Chairman, I plan to lead the community through the development of a set of housing policies to meet the challenge of this generation, to make Arlington a place for young families, for seniors, and for everyone in between. I suggest that our housing policies be guided by five principles where I believe there's broad agreement. First, Arlington should be open to all. Inclusive communities are dynamic and they are resilient. Barriers to entry should be identified and dismantled. This is an absolute foundational principle that we must operate on. Second, our planning for the future should as always be community-based. And that means engaging all stakeholders in our community and incorporating every thoughtful view. Third, planning should be iterative, allowing us to course correct when necessary and to evolve over time. Fourth, and to the greatest extent practicable, living in Arlington, should not be determined by one's income level. Our attention to vibrant and diverse communities should span across each and every one of our 26 square miles. 
And fifth, planning to meet our housing goals must be integrated with the other inter interconnected priorities that we hold dear. Creating transit and active transportation oriented communities that are safe for all users. Reducing greenhouse gas emissions and attracting and retaining employers that support good jobs for workers. As I have worked to do regionally and have shared with you all on occasion, I will work to ensure that Arlington achieves success in each of our priority areas by pursuing the solutions that emerge when we see how housing intersects with transportation and mobility and where they both intersect with improving our resilience to climate change. Now these principles for inclusive and responsible and managed growth are not exclusive to, but certainly apply to our missing middle conversation. Missing middle, a concept that has activated and engaged our community in ways that both inspire me and also give me cause for grave concern. It has been truly exciting to see so many people thinking deeply about housing policy, no matter their stance on the, the details. Being invited to homes to meet a, a few neighbors uh, that ultimately resulted in over dozens attending, neighborhood walking tours where the number of people tagging along grew by the block, standing room only forums and houses of worship, worship structured conversations, uh, meetings in person and online and, and points of contact through email and chance meetings at coffee shops have all been opportunities where I've engaged with people deeply on these issues. And that kind of engagement will be vitally important in shaping the best public policy possible. But I also recognize that for many, there are significant emotions that people bring to this public policy discussion. Some homeowners are incredibly anxious about what changes may come to their neighborhoods, and fearing the worst, want to just leave things be. While many others are impatient with the status quo and eager for the most expansive changes possible to create more opportunity to remain in the community that they have come to cherish. What causes me concern is not that this issue has created extreme polarization, but that for some there is a seeming lack of appreciation for the legitimacy of policy positions that are disparate from theirs. And worse, a disregard for the humanity of those who hold those positions. Now I am convinced that Arlington can do better. My pledge to you is to forge a path on missing middle and all other questions concerning growth and change that reflect the principles of the framework that I outlined earlier. And I ask that our community engage not through the zero-sum lens of my way or else, but rather with an eye towards holding us, the county board, accountable for moving thoughtfully and reasonably given all the positions that may be held on a given issue. A perspective, no matter how sincerely or strongly held, is not the way forward for Arlington if it fails to include the needs of all Arlingtonians. So while the missing middle conversation has laid bare that there are competing priorities demanding our attention and different visions for Arlington's future that we must all consider, I ask that we don't lose sight of what unites us, a vision of an Arlington community that delivers excellent services and facilitates the community conditions where everyone can thrive and provides opportunity for future generations. Even among those I know may be diametrically opposed on an issue like missing middle, I believe we share these aspirations. And I look forward to working with you, my colleagues, to do our part in moving us closer to fully realizing that vision. You all have my sincerest wishes for a fulfilling 2023. <clears throat>